evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the Constitution, today's events, and politics into light to your living room each month. Tonight, I'm James Barrett, and with Mark Malakowski, we're going we're gonna to cover some subjects that will pique your interest. Mark, what are we starting with tonight? Well, Jim, tonight we're going to talk about uh, Obamacare and the potential costs that it could bring to the, uh, the, the, our viewing public. Okay, when you're talking about costs, are you talking about the increase in the insurance rates? Are you talking about the in increase in the deductibles? Are you talking about the fact that you're going to lose your doctor and lose your program as opposed to what was promised? What are you talking about? We're talking Mark? about cash, Jim. Cash. cash. cash Actual cash. Cash money. Yeah. Cash money. Cash, yeah. So how, uh, what, what are some of the costs that we're talking about here, Mark? Well, there's a couple of different opinions, okay? One opinion espoused by the president is that everyone's going to save $2,500 for every household, which would be about $250 billion a year for the country, that we're going to save hundreds of billions of dollars every year on Obamacare. That's one way of looking at it. But unfortunately, Mark, the cost of the health care, the whole health care rollout is substantially above that. So how can a savings of a couple of hundred billion really add up when you're talking about a program that could be a hundred billion or two hundred billion extra on the taxpayers dole well what's happening if you look at what's happened so far okay uh... obamacare spent six hundred and seventy eight million dollars whoa time out six hundred seventy eight to do what for the website the website so six hundred seventy eight million dollars for the website well wait a minute I built, I had a website built for my office that cost $2,000. And you know what that website can do? I can take payments online. I can have people look at all our TV shows. And that's just my office. Why would it cost $678 million? Well, you didn't have the smiling girl on there. Oh, the oh wait, that's girl. right. They don't have that anymore. They, but they yeah, took that, off, took that right? off. Okay, yeah. So $678 million for the website. And experts look at this website, and it didn't work as well as it otherwise would have been desired. And... Uh, but they said even a front end like that would be a million bucks or a couple of million bucks. So at the highest, that would be about $2 million what they got on October 1st. And other people are saying to do the complete thing absolute right, the front end and the back end would be about $10 million. So we, we estimate that a lot of experts estimate that what they got for October was worth about a million or $2 million. Okay, but I have a question. I understand the insurance companies were supposed to help develop the back end of the website, so that would have been paid for by the insurance companies. Where does this $678 million come from? Well, the $678 million uh, went to uh, Michelle uh, uh, Obama's college friend what uh, wait a minute wait a minute you can't tell me that there was a uh, an inside payment to somebody related to Mil Michelle Obama how well, could no, that not be rela not related to the, she was a she was her college buddy and her uh, her uh, uh, company CGI um, they're the one who got the contract for the Obamacare website. Well, you know, now that you bring up CGI, it does refresh my memory that, in fact, it was a no-bid contract handed to CGI, and the value of that contract was $678 million. But the problem is they had spent almost $400 million to the point where they did the rollout in October, and then what they found, because there were so many fixes necessary, they've allocated up to a billion dollars for CGI to fix this. But the challenge I have is... A billion dollars for a website? I don't think Amazon paid for that that much to build their website. What's the comparison? Well, what's interesting about it is he, even if you use the $678 million number and it's a $2 million website, so you're, spe you're spending $2 million for a $678 million website, so that gives you a profit of $606, $676 million, which is a 33,900% profit. Wait a minute. You give the profit to who? Well, CGI. Oh, CGI. Up. Well, I'm saying for what they got, for what they paid. So they're pulling down, you know, a, a 33, 900% profit, which is a good profit margin. It's a good profit. But I understand that CGI has already been on five previous projects with government, including the IRS, by the way, and health services prior. And they had problems with those websites and those type of technologies prior to this. So why would they get a no-bid contract valued at almost 700 million dollars mark well it's, it'll be more than 700 million but well the, after the fixes <laughs> but the point is if you take this profit margin so far in Obamacare if you look like what they've done and you expand that and say okay the the whole health care industry right is about a, a sixth of the economy which is about 16 trillion dollars at 2.4 uh, trillion right and so if you're gonna get that same profit margin 
use the same, and the same numbers keep working out the same way, that means we're going to spend about $718 trillion a year on health care. And over Obama's next three years, we'll be into about $2.4 quadrillion for health care. Wait a minute. You're talking about numbers that I don't even know where that's going. Why don't we go back and find out? I understand the woman that was Michelle Obama's friend was named, uh, I have it right here, Tony Towns Whitley, and she was actually uh, graduated the same year as Michelle Obama from Princeton, right. and that, in fact, they were part of all the same groups, and they hung out together. But wouldn't that look a little odd to the to national press to find out that Michelle's Obama's best friend from college? Her company got a no-bid contract for $700 million on a website that could have been built for 10 or less? What's, how do you justify that? Well, there's nothing technically illegal about that. Oh, of course not. But it does kind of raise a couple eyebrows if they're going to be taking this type of profit margin. You know, what's going to happen to the rest of the project? And if you're talking about $2.4 quadrillion, that's enough. If you took $1 bills, put them on top of each other, and stacked them up to the moon and back 336 times, That'd be your 2.4 quadrillion. Well, that's a lot of money, Mark. Yeah. The moon's actually the moon's a long <laughs> ways away. So my question is, though, are they, is the website? I guess the website must be fully functional and must be perfectly operated, so everyone can get the healthcare programs they want. Is that where it's at today? Well, it's hard to say, but there's some people that say if you leave your personal information on the website, Obamacare website, they're at risk of their confidential information being hacked. Um, there's high exposure of personal information on the federal Obama Obamacare online exchange, according to it was a white hack hacker. White hat, I guess, is a good hackers. You know, like they go and do security. Right. Uh, David Kennedy, who testified for Congress about the flawed Obamacare website. So, um, another website security expert who testified for, before Congress was a Morgan Wright. And he said the whole website needs to be shut down, a new one built from scratch. Well, so. wait a minute. Amazon and eBay and all these other sites seem to be able to operate without a problem with millions of hits a day. Why is it that this website is not functioning? Is there any explanation? Did Kathleen Sebelius have an explanation? Because she's actually the, the person in charge of this. Well, some of the back and forth was that the administration wanted to let some of the information out piece by piece mm -hmm. they didn't want to and so there was some right there was some push and tug between the technical people and the political people okay so what but how does that play out is Kathleen Sebelius taking responsibility for this out and out failure of the website or is she just saying hey that's the way it goes what's she doing about it well actually um, Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius testified she did this under oath the website has never crashed she testified under oath under penalty of perjury but it certainly functioned at a very low speed. So she testified under penalty of perjury that it never crashed. Do you realize that uh, the whole month of October the website crashed, and then it went into November with the website crashing? Did she have a, any knowledge of that, that the website was actually crashing? Well, when it was, she was showing off Obamacare website in Miami, Miami it crashed, okay? That and was on stage, right? It, no, it was on TV. It was on, on TV. Well, on, it, was on, it was a video. Anyway, the site was crashing, applying to David Kennedy for online security firm, uh, firm Trusted Sec. So anyway, she denies that it's ever crashed. It's working fine. You guys are making this up. That's, uh, that's, okay. her, I that's got, what I she said it, under penalty it, of perjury. So. Oh, so, okay, so we have a, a no-bid contract that went to Michelle Obama's best friend from college. We have a website that never crashed, never although crashed. nobody can sign up. We also have numbers coming out of the White House saying that they will not tell us how many people actually paid to sign up, although they say they've had 2 million visits. There's no record of how many people of those two million visits have actually paid. So then, what are we to believe? Did you try and use the website? No, I wouldn't try to use the website. I tried to use the website. Yeah. And you know what I found? I could. They wanted me to data enter my social security number, my name, my address, my income before I can even look at any healthcare programs. So what is that all about? Does Amazon ask for your credit card before you even look? What do we want to buy? Well, what's interesting about the argument that, uh, that it's going to save the $250 billion um, is that they were saying, okay, when people have this health insurance, they're not going to go to the emergency room. Oh. And that'll save a lot of money because they'll go to a regular doctor instead of going to the emergency room. Well, there was a whole study done with uh, 10,000 low-income people in Oregon yeah. that got Medicaid. And they found out that they have they do 40% more emergency room visits. Oh, since they the Obamacare. Since they, since they got the Medicaid. Okay, so. I think we're going to have to lay off and move on because i got to tell you, this is too big for one segment.